Next section of this uh, episode is about can metabolic is answering the question, can metabolic syndrome be reversed? And I think I love that question because it implies that one wants to go on offense if it is possible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so what's the answer, Jen? Can metabolic syndrome be reversed? Well, the, the good news is, is yes. Um, because our, our bodies are this fine-tuned system, just as easily as they can get out of whack with some strategy and an offensive mindset and identifying your numbers, knowing what they are, knowing if you have three of the five risk factors and what risk factors you have, you can hone in on those and definitely reverse it. So that's the good news um, in, in all of this. And uh, it's really just improvable for, for everybody. I mean, there's mm -hmm. not any one person that I can think of that can't improve their health in some sure. way um, or, or one of Which those is why workers. we love the word optimization. Yeah, yeah. You, you can know. definitely optimize your blood pressure, yeah. your waistline, you can always improve. You know, your your glucose, you know, all of those things. Especially in the things that matter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think I think you alluded to it in the at the tail end of the first section where all diseases, including metabolic syndrome, exist on a spectrum. Yep. Nobody wakes up one day with diabetes. That no. just doesn't happen. Your experience might <laughs> be like, oh my gosh, I went to the doctor for the first time. I was totally fine. And then I left 45 minutes with 17 medications and all of these diagnoses. Those have been going on and developing and worsening in the background for years, sometimes decades, because the default is developing these diseases. Yeah. Um, and like you said, the good news is for many people, it is preventable, reversible, but because it does exist on a spectrum, it depends on where you are on the journey. Mm -hmm. So it may not be preventable and it may not be curable, but it's certainly optimizable. Mm -hmm. Everyone could stand to improve and optimize their metabolic efficiency with a very thoughtful, strategic, offensive minded strategy. Um, we just really believe there's nothing more significant that you could do with your health other than not smoking yeah. than to have an offensive mindset around metabolic efficiency. Yeah. So how do you reverse metabolic syndrome? I think, I think in order to answer that question, Jen, explain to us what is the root physiology behind all, in, all metabolic disease? Well, it really starts with this thing <laughs> that we call insulin resistance. Mm -hmm. So... If, the, if you take one thing away from this podcast, please know that it all starts with the hormone insulin, right? This mm -hmm. this is, I think, what you've called the holy grail of... The holy grail of health, health right. is a normalized blood sugar, which you can only achieve through optimization of your insulin response. Yes, right. So insulin is a hormone. It is made in our pancreas, and the main... Uh, job of insulin is to to help our blood sugar enter our cells. So it would be our muscle cells, our fat cells, and our liver cells, where we use them for energy. Mm -hmm. We use that that um, blood glucose for energy, and we get glucose from really two sources: mostly our food, but then our liver also makes some, yep. um, and that's kind of a protective mechanism for times of famine. Um, which it's is actually a great thing. It's actually cool. I know. And you go long periods of time with no food, but you don't, yeah. your blood sugar doesn't drop. Yeah. So the liver stores it, and then it also can release it when we need it, which is pretty cool. Um, so we, we ingest food, and our blood sugars rise, can rise faster or spike higher, depending on the type of food we mm -hmm. eat. Um, and then um, insulin gets released from our pancreas, and the main goal is to lower that blood sugar, bring it back down so that it normalizes. Mm -hmm. And this is a great mechanism to keep us from being perpetually diabetic, right? Mm -hmm. We don't want elevated levels of blood sugar all the time. But <laughs> what happens is when we eat a diet that is not conducive to a lower blood sugar environment, that blood sugar stays consistently elevated and we need more and more insulin to try to bring it down. Mm -hmm. So the pancreas is pumping out insulin, the blood sugar stays perpetually high and our cells, muscle, liver, and um, fat cells become kind of um, desensitized to insulin's role. That's right. So it basically, they ignore it, they ignore the signal. So what happens is the blood sugar keeps going up, um, the insulin keeps going up and therefore 
all kinds of cascading things happen. We start storing fat, um, we start getting symptomatic, and this is really like a precursor to prediabetes and diabetes if it's not identified and corrected. Yeah, I mean, insulin resistance is what you're describing. Yeah. The state of perpetual hyperinsulinemia mm-hmm. and hyperglucose levels. Um, creates the cascade of physiologic changes that create these diagnostic criteria for metabolic syndrome. It causes trunkal obesity. Mm -hmm. It causes hypertension and it causes diabetes and it causes your cholesterol numbers to go sideways, Mm -hmm. the low HDL, the high triglycerides. Um, It causes the increased fasting Mm -hmm. glucose in the morning. So like when you're looking at those diagnostic criteria, every one of them maps back Back. the exact same yeah. thing which is you have over too much time you have too much blood sugar which means you're exposed to too much insulin which means your tissues are not responding to the mm-hmm. insulin which is insulin resistance and eventually you become diabetic diabetes is just poorly controlled insulin mm-hmm. resistance it just it's a spectrum so the term that you used while we were preparing for this which i love is it's fanning the flames yeah. right it's like the spark is the metabolic syndrome yes the flame gets you know, stronger and stronger with insulin resistance, and that just cascades into yeah, something. Yeah, and you think about the horrible. diseases that we're so scared about, like cancer and heart disease. Mm-hmm. Well, diabetes, which is Ugh. just poorly controlled insulin resistance, is a cardiac risk equivalent to having known heart disease. Yeah. It's the, it, it is the number, other than smoking, it's the number one contributor to heart disease. Mm-hmm. It it's is also horrible for your kidneys. It's not the only thing that causes heart disease. But if you have diabetes, you will have cardiac issues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The end. The end. That's pretty scary. (laughs) Cancer cells, tumors, these are uncontrolled cell growth. It is Mm -hmm. un tumors are cells dividing without the signal to divide. They are growing out of control when your body is not giving it to Mm -hmm. the sign. This is a high energy consumption. What do we think cancer cells consume? Shh. Glucose, yeah. sugar. <laughs> sugar. <laughs> There's no other fuel source for a cancer cell. Uh, somebody so me- I know called it cancer food. Sugar's cancer food. Yeah. I'm like, no, Ooh. this is th- this is what we mean. When we say insulin resistance is fanning the flames mm-hmm. of downstream end stage metabolic disease like cancer and heart disease. This is massively significant. Yeah, that's why we take it so seriously. And and taking a passive reactionary uh, approach to this means you will be one of the 60 to 70 percent of all adults who end up on a statin for cholesterol a blood pressure medicine for blood pressure Mm -hmm. like always looking to lower your waistline like you have all the same diseases so not to digress but you may also end up on insulin which by the way will make you gain weight (laughs) which which and the answer is always more insulin. Yeah. Which controls your blood sugar mm-hmm. and makes you feel good in the short term, but long term it actually hastens the very problem, which yeah. is this hyperinsulinemic state. Yeah. This is why all diabetics just get worse. Yeah. Uh it it's a very slippery slope. Um and the only play is offense. Mm-hmm. And so then you would say, Well, what is the offense? And we believe kind of a, as a as a continuation over the last three months of content we've been creating, that we believe that all meaningful progress in one's health journey typically come from either optimizing from one of three pillars. The first pillar is uh, what what we call how you feed your body, Mm -hmm. so your diet. Mm -hmm. Is there an opportunity to optimize the way you feed your body? Is there a pillar number two is how do you move your body, Mm -hmm. your fitness plan? What is your activity like? What is your strategy for moving through space while you're alive. Mm -hmm. And the third pillar is how do you recover your body? Mm -hmm. So how do you eat? How do you move? How do you recover? We believe all meaningful progress falls into one of those three buckets most of the time. So with that framework, an offensive mindset towards metabolic syndrome would be diet. As a general rule, we think for most people adopting a fasted lifestyle makes the most sense and it is the, the greatest uh, return on in your investment. Mm-hmm. Some people may fast for 12 hours a day. Some people 16, 18. Some people do 24 hours a day. Some people like long fast. 
I have no idea. The idea here is find out what fasting is, what works for you, what's practical, what's sustainable, and adopt mm -hmm. a lifestyle of eating less often. And historically, what we have seen in our members who come in with lipid panels that are disaster, when they start fasting, those numbers turn around really quickly. Very fast. Our cadence is usually to recheck them about in 90 days, and we generally it's rare see to not see improvement a marked improvement in those numbers that's so that is that that's two criteria you can take off the list that's for right. metabolic syndrome yeah and not to mention create some momentum yeah uh when you do open your mouth and you are going to eat we believe that i don't really care what dietary thesis you want to prescribe subscribe to just eat whole foods mm -hmm. if it wasn't food 100 years ago it isn't food <laughs> right like get rid of processed foods mm -hmm. make it real food close your feeding window as tight as possible that's sustainable and repeatable and that will get you 80 percent 85 percent of the way there from the diet bucket yep fitness the holy grail here here is maximize lean mass mm -hmm. your skeletal muscle as a human you're built on the back of your muscles and bones yep. your muscles are your sugar burners that's where your insulin sensitivity response is going to be the more lean mass you have the easier it is going to be to maintain an optimal blood glucose and insulin sensitivity. Mm -hmm. That implies that you need to be doing some strength training. Yep. You need strong muscles, you need as much as possible. So strength training, even for women, we and even for our more senior members, finding a way to move your body against resistance is absolutely fundamentally critical. Yes. Um, we like, again, for most people to do an early morning workout where you're fasted, where you go into this, you're already not in a fed state. So you've already kind of optimized your biochemistry. Take that biochemistry, fasted biochemistry into some strength training and movement. Prolong your fast and put a little mechanical stress. Mm -hmm. It really has tremendous benefit. Uh, and what we don't push enough, but there's great data is a post dinner walk. Mm -hmm. Eat supper at five or six, give yourself an hour or two, go for a 30 minute walk. There's great data to say that this is excellent for insulin sensitivity and glycemic control, not to mention peace of mind, stress, stress <laughs> relief. You sliding into your restful hours mm -hmm. in a very, very depleted state, which is ideal. And then lastly, sleep. We have been talking a lot about sleep in terms of recovery mm -hmm. we, we we currently believe that it is more important than diet and exercise i mean it just is the single greatest area of opportunity it happens to be the most elusive to high achieving uh you know our type of clientele mm -hmm. uh, kind of across the board you, you live a life where there's a lot on the line yeah and it's hard to turn that off and sleep can become very very elusive and we just do all of our recovering while we're sleeping. Yeah. And so we bring some of yesterday's fatigue into today, and that's unfair, and that starts stacking. Mm -hmm. um, we believe that some really great, simple things you can do would be, number one, make it a priority. Yeah. Stop, s stop poo-pooing sleep as being important. Mm -hmm. That's foolish, it's deluded thinking, and it's not true. Yeah. It's the most important thing. So you make it a priority, and then start tracking your data. Mm -hmm. There's some great tools out yeah. there. Whoop, Aura Ring, big fans. What you're going to find is when you start tracking your data, you'll start looking at the data, and you will, without even realizing it, begin to change and modify your behavior so that you get better scores. Yeah. And that is very easy. And those are the things that we believe could be very easy to apply, offensive-minded kind of tactics. One thing we talk about is you can't manage what you don't measure, right? You so, gotta your measure best, it. Yeah, your your best hope in that situation is you're guessing. Yeah. And uh, hope is a wonderful thing, but it's not <laughs> a strategy. <laughs>